In this video, we'll be talking about conditions where the ideal gas law is not going to necessarily be the most accurate way to relate between the pressure, temperature, and volume for a particular gas. So in the case of the ideal gas law, uh, the ideal gas law is valid at conditions of uh, low density. So if we were to envision a box of gas molecules, these gas molecules would be very far apart and wouldn't really know the presence of one another. So if you look at the ideal gas law, then PV equals RT, or in this case I've written the volume as the specific volume, which is going to be meters cubed per mole. The specific volume is going to be proportional to 1 over the density. So if we rearrange this expression, we can see that the condition of low density or a high specific volume is when the ideal gas law is going to be valid. So and that would be a case of high temperatures or low pressures. Now if we have a particular process where we are not under the conditions of high temperature and low pressure, you may have deviations from the ideal gas law, in which case we need to have a strategy uh, to develop more accurate predictions um, of the pressure, vol pressure volume temperature relationship which characterizes a equation of state. So in order to accomplish this, we're going to discuss uh, <clears throat> three possible options to correct from the ideal gas law. So one, we will improve the ins assumptions. And this will lead us to a cubic equation of state. Another possibility here is we will we will add in plus or minus corrections to the ideal gas law, and this will lead us to the virial equation of state. Now this is a simplification. The virial equation of state has a strong foundation in statistical mechanics, but from a very practical perspective, it's a correction factor to the ideal gas law. Uh, and the third option here would be to add in times or divide corrections. And this will lead us to the compressibility factor. Which is typically given by Z. So in the case of a cubic equation of state, it gets its name uh, because it can be written in the following form where we have the specific volume cubed plus some factor times by the volume squared the volume and then some leading term so if we can rearrange a particular equation to look like this we will call it a cubic equation of state now the most straightforward cubic equation of state that is commonly studied is the van der Waals equation of state. But it's not very accurate, so it's really only used for illustrative purposes. Uh, so we'll talk about it here just from that perspective. So the van der Waals equation of state is given by the, final, the, the following formula. And you'll notice there's a couple differences from the ideal gas law. Uh, namely, we'll see here that we have this minus B term. This characterizes the excluded volume. So in the case of a system of gas particles, if you have a high density of gas, there are certain areas occupied by other gas molecules that your particular one can't fill. That is what the B represents. The next we'll have here this is an interaction term. So this value A is meant to see how attractive or repulsive each of these different gas molecules are. So if we can envision a surface here, and we have gas molecules bouncing off of them, this force that is exerted on the wall <coughs> by the individual uh, atomic collisions, that will constitute the macroscopic pressure that we would observe. If 
we have some attraction between the particles, that may affect how strongly the particles impact the wall, ultimately impacting the pressure overall. So the question that we have now is, how do we get A and B for a large number of different compounds? Now when we're dealing with the ideal gas law, it's very convenient because we don't actually care what the individual molecules themselves are. We can still estimate its pressure based on a particular volume and temperature. But when we're dealing with interactions, we, it makes a lot of sense that if we have a bigger molecule here, that this B term would correspondingly be larger. And for that, we invoke something called the law of corresponding states. So if we are to look at a PT phase diagram, where we have pressure plotted versus temperature. Now, we'll draw a couple features on this graph. Up here, we have the critical point. And at this point where all the lines meet, this is the triple point. At low temperatures and high pressures, materials are generally, are always going to be in the solid phase. As you increase the temperature at a constant pressure, we'll form a liquid. And at low pressures and high temperatures, we have a gas or a vapor. So it's in this region over here that the ideal gas law is going to be the most accurate. But anytime we start to work up into this area of high pressure or low temperature, we're going to want to use a different material. <coughs> so at the point here, the critical point, we call this the critical temperature and the critical pressure. And this is something that's tabulated for most all materials that you'll end up encountering. Now the assumption in the law of corresponding states is effectively that all material will behave the same as a function of its relative position from its critical point. So for example, we'll define a couple of variables, TR, which is the temperature divided by the critical temperature. So this is the actual system temperature that we're dealing with. And this is that particular property's critical temperature. We can also have the reduced pressure, which is the actual system pressure divided by that system's critical pressure. What the law of corresponding states relies on, or is, is saying, <coughs> is that if I have nitrogen at some TR, PR, that it would behave exactly the same as, let's say, methane at its same PR and TR. So this is an approximation that says that the most important factor is where your system is in relationship to its critical point. Now if we go back and look at the Van der Waals equation of state, through some, some math that we don't have to go into, we can come up with expressions for A and B that are only going to depend on the system's critical point. For A, the, the formula is 27 R squared T C squared over 64 P C. Now if we look at B, we have R T C over 8 P C. Now there are more advanced cubic equations of state, um, but the same general approach um, exists in those systems as well, uh, except that they have a lot more um, terms to include than just the A and the B term. There are some other factors to include. <coughs> but overall, the general notion of what a cubic equation of state is, is that you are including for some other effects that are not counted for uh, in just the ideal gas law. So now if we talk about the virial equation of state. The virial equation of state is, is derived from statistical mechanics um, that considers the interaction of molecules. But it does take a slightly different form, whereas a cubic equation of state is more empirically based, um, but has a lot of factors to, to correct for things.
So in the virial equation of state, we have z, which is equal to the compressibility factor, is equal to PV over RT. And in the virial equation of state, this is equal to 1 plus B, which is a function of temperature, over the specific volume. So if you'll notice, if B is equal to 0, we get the ideal gas law behavior. So all of the non-ideality that exists in the virial equation of state comes from this uh, value for B. So if we go and look at the details of how we write B, we'll see that we can write B <coughs> as a function of uh, particular properties, um, mostly the critical point. So we have R, T, C over P, C. We have some additional terms here where B naught is equal to where TR is the reduced temperature. So it's the temperature divided by the critical temperature. So from this, it's really just algebraic substitutions in order to get uh, a value for the, uh, get the values necessary for the virial equation of state. Now the one thing we didn't talk about is this term right here. And this is omega, which is the eccentric factor. The eccentric factor is a term used to effectively characterize the geometry and the polar nature of the particular molecule that you're looking at. And it's generally going to be a fitted term that is used to improve the accuracy of the fit itself. But effectively, what we're looking at for non-ideal gases, and in this particular video, we won't talk about the compressibility factor, but overall, what we're attempting to do is to take the inaccuracies of the ideal gas law and find different strategies uh, that are more appropriate or less appropriate in different circumstances uh, in order to get more accurate predictions. So for the cubic equation of state, we really only discuss the van der Waals equation of state. The more commonly used ones are going to be the SRK and the uh, peng robinson equation of state. Um, but the, the general procedure is the same. They are just much larger and more tedious to use equations, and so I didn't write them out particularly in this video but they're generally accessible in any common textbook or even on a Wikipedia page.